Welcome to Carefree Hobbies. Um, we are proud to bring back some seminars. Um, I hope in the near future we're going to have I've got about five or six kind of good ones lined up, kind of what I did at uh, when I used to work at North Star um, back in the 2000s and late 90s. Uh, basic airbrushing was probably one of the most popular classes because it kind of takes away a lot of the it takes away a lot of the the apprehension, let's call it that, of airbrushing. And then we're going to do an advanced airbrushing. We'll do a modeling 101, um, just from like an A to Z on model building. We do a figure painting one. I have a like a young guy who's honestly going to be a world class painter, um, and really quite interesting. He came as an eight-year-old with his dad to take figure painting when I did it at North Star Hobbies. Right. And he's 30 now, and he's almost, a, he, he will be a world-class painter. He's already a, a, gold, a gold medal painter. Um, so he's going to do basic, uh, basic figure painting. Um, so he's kind of taken over, which is kind of neat. So we've got a lot of neat things kind of up and coming. Um, I've got the uh, possibility of doing a 3D printing seminar we're thinking about bringing in a 3d printer but there's a couple of guys that are exceptionally good at it um, and we're looking at kind of incorporating that into a class too but airbrushing 101 is honestly the uh the meat and potatoes mm -hmm. because i think that when it, it's just an absolute joy to hear people still come in and they'll go you're the guy that taught me airbrushing like in 98 and i'm like Okay. Okay. And, and 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 you know to see them still modeling and to see them still enjoying modeling. Yeah. Um, that's kind of what really makes me happy. So yeah. So now we have this environment of a classroom um, in uh, Carefree. It's uh, it's a perfect venue, and um, I hope to kind of continue that forward. So yeah, let's get let's get kind of started. Um, I've always started with the same premise of airbrushing, and I know Mark here has heard this, and, and um, airbrushing is based on five rules, okay? Which is quite surprising. Only five. Only? Yeah, really, only five. Only five. So, you have number one, clean. Number two, clean. Three. I see a pattern. There's a, four. There's, a, there's, a pa there's a pattern. Clean. And the fifth rule. Clean. Real world. And then you kind of have a bracket and have fun. And if you keep to those rules. Your brushing is going to be super easy, super easy. That's it. The most basic things of airbrushing. Um, I can't overemphasize it, and it's really weird because when I do this class, I think people walk away and they they will come back after time and they'll kind of say, "I still clean my airbrush." But what I like about that is they'll come back and say, but I love airbrushing. And I, you know, I have a gentleman that just bought an airbrush maybe two, three months ago. And he came in the other day and he was like, I can't believe how much I enjoy it. He paints model cars. And he just started back and, you know, he's probably in the late 60s. And he goes, I, you know, he, he just absolutely, and he showed me pictures of the work he's doing. And I was like, I got to admit, I was like, that looks really good. Mm -hmm. and he goes, but I clean my airbrush, Tom. Yeah. And so I think that's, if you can take that out of this, I think that that's the most important thing, that you walk away and you know that there's no mystery behind an airbrush. There's there's none at all. So what we're going to do is, um, let me just shut this off for a minute. Um, so... We're going to go through some basics, which I think is fundamentally good for everybody. Um, a lot of people, and I don't mean this, I mean this kind of honestly, 
it, it can be confusing because the internet and I, I know I do this spiel too about the internet and and I can't thank Robert here from Barbican enough because the things he offers to everybody on his YouTube channel um, which will be linked to our website and things like that um, he offers so many good things over the years to to modelers in in Canada and around the world the internet has been a great thing it really is I got it man um, I'm not the biggest guy in all the sports betting commercials but there's other sides of the internet that are amazing but what I say to people regarding getting their information about modeling online is it's like anything you have to kind of you kind of have to pick and choose mm -hmm. um, I'm really bad because generally I will I always have the the opinion of unless I can see your work because I know my work and and I've been blessed because I have been you know I've done work for collectors I've done museum work I've done stuff for TV movies um, you know, modeling's been something in my life since I was eight. That being said, the internet has opened wonderful doors for people. But you have to kind of take with a grain of salt. Because I had another gentleman the other day walk in and want me to fix his airbrush. And he says, yeah, but I saw online and this guy chopped this with a bandsaw and... He wanted to kind of use JB Weld to put a fixture onto, and I'm like, whoa, 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 time out, time out, here, time out. I said, Pash designed something like that a hundred years ago for a reason, and it works. So whatever guy you're watching in like Indiana or something that takes it and chops it and cut it, that's really, you know, I don't understand it. He's like, it's so the, so the internet is, you have to kind of take, but there's a yeah. ton of good people online that you can reference, especially with airbrushing. But I find that the best way to do it is just to take bits and pieces of information here, there, here, there, and apply it to yourself. What makes, what will make your painting better? What will make your modeling better? And it's as simple as that. Yeah. And observing the just keep the five rules that I use and I think that that I've developed and I think you're gonna be fine so and and this is it's so easy because rule number three clean yeah see <laughs> that's it rule number two clean that's it that's it so where you get that is so this we're gonna go through the basics here um, this is my day-to-day -day airbrush it's a it's a it's an Iwata um, it's an HP uh, CH plus and we'll pass it around in a minute. I personally, you're going to see the Iwata banner because we have a really good um, relationship with Iwata here at Carefree. We're uh, one of the premier dealers of Iwata. So the other good thing too is I've serviced them for 20 plus years. Um, I don't really want to say one brand is better than the other because that's just not what I'm trying to kind of say. But, but, um, you got to admit, Iwata's perfected the airbrush um, for parts availability, for servicing, um, for quality. Like this is a 20 plus year old airbrush. I have just replaced, and I'll pass it around, I've, I've replaced a few parts on it here and there. But some nights, this airbrush I'm holding in my hand, I've shot six or seven colors with it in a night. Looks brand new. Yeah, and that's, and that's watching a hockey game. You know, so <laughs> it, you'll see how easy it is. It's like shoot you know clean shoot clean that's it shoot clean that's it and so you're gonna find how quickly the airbrush will be the best tool you can have um, and I like Iwata because if something goes wrong the parts are always available and things like that now I'm not saying that Pash and Badger and mm -hmm. you know um, they're great airbrushes too but I like the fact that um, anything that Iwata makes generally they're, they're kind of like the, I don't want to say the Toyota Corolla, but, but they're just indestructible. And you can just keep using and using and using the airbrush and, and never be frustrated. So yeah, anything we do here at Carefree. Um, I also, in cleaning and servicing airbrushes, I also have a tool that I use to sharpen the needles. Um, so if you ever bring me a needle or something like that, 
Um, every time I service an airbrush here, I'll sharpen the needle, re-lubricate it. Um, and, and when you put all that together, you find it's, again, it's like a car, right? Everything functions properly. You're going to have no problem at all, right? And they have a really wide range of... They do, they do. And that's another good point. We'll talk about that. The other misconception is you have to spend a ton of money. And you really don't. Um, Mark brought his airbrush a couple of weeks back. Um, and it's one of the the um, the, the budget kind of conscious um, Iwatas, the Neo. But he has the Neo with the trigger, like the TR. And it sprays beautifully. And it's easy to maintain. Um, and so that's the other good thing about Iwata. Like when you look at their range of what they have now, price point wise, you have price points that are quite, um, are, are very appealing to most people. And you can go right up to a custom micron, like which I have to, which is like fifteen, you know, thousand, twelve hundred dollars. Now, <coughs> the beauty of, of an airbrush in the right hands, and when the airbrush rule number like five, clean. clean. So when the airbrush is clean um, and serviced properly, the difference between this airbrush and a custom micron is minimal in the right hands. So yes, the custom micron is the absolute best airbrush out there, but are you gonna see a really noticeable difference in painting that? Absolutely not. Um, so again, and we'll go through that because I have an airbrush here which is the grandfather of all airbrushes. It's still available for like $100 and some of the best model builders in the world still use it. And it's like 100 bucks. So we'll go through that. So the two basics, the, we're going to go through the fundamentals of the airbrush. Um, and, and we're going to just talk briefly of the differences between, um, between single action, double action, and all the different feeds and things like that. So when I go on about cleaning, um, kind of the story I use is, is, you know, I guess my career, uh, you know, I was a Toronto firefighter and a captain. And when, when people go by and they see a fire truck and it shoots down the road and it's all, it's clean and things like that, you think, wow, you know, and, but we keep things clean for a reason. You know, it's not because of an appearance, which is kind of also an image that we like to maintain, but our equipment, everything we do has to be, is clean and serviceable. You know, and ready for use. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's exactly why. So it's, it's you know, some guy, you wrap your car around a pole at four in the morning and we pull out all that heavy equipment, like the Jaws of Life and stuff like that. We don't have the liberty to say, you know, I don't think it, whoa, that's dirty. Let's see if we can get some of that. It's not working properly. We have to be ready to go like that. Now, is an airbrush like that? No. But if you kind of use that, this is my tool also now. Like this is like like this is the tool of my trade. I still model daily. <clears throat> I still build for people and collectors and stuff like that. Um, for Mag, I'm doing a book article now for something. Um, so this is still the tool of my trade now. So it 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 kind of leads into that. You know, the, the minute that this thing doesn't work, you know, it, it adds up to frustration, you know, and, and all the normal things. So so the, the, the cleaner it is, the more functional, the more serviceable it is, I think you're going to be a much happier modeler. So, yeah, so that's why I, I really emphasize keeping it clean and keeping it serviceable. So let's, we'll, we'll jump right into the differences here. So the two basic kinds we know. Uh, so, um, a lot of times, you, you know, outside of the internet, there's some really good stuff out there. And don't discount things like this, fine scale modeler, airbrushing secrets. Um, I would still rather take this magazine than kind of watch somebody I don't know, you know, when they're trying to tell you to cut an airbrush and, yeah. you know, or some of the other crazy things I've seen, you know, just, yeah, you can, you can kind of mix cooking oil and, you know, like, no. <laughs> no, 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 but, but, you know, something like this is a super, super good reference. And I, I to be honest, I still read the stuff. 
Like when mm-hmm. when when fine scale prints it, I will still read it, and I I look at it and I think it's a great little reference piece for for your bench. You know, to have that beside you sometimes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So let's go through the very basics of, of what we're going to go through. Two types, basically. Single action, double action. The granddaddy of airbrushes was a single action airbrush. Um, this is a Pash H. Why was it designed? Pretty simple. Um, mainly its job was that of photo retouching back in the day. Way before computers, way before anything. Everything we did, every type of time a picture was taken, it was retouched. So they could airbrush something out. They could. So this airbrush, probably going on, let's call it 100 years. Sure. If I was a betting guy, um, I think it's probably about 100 years old now. It's an absolute flawless design. Still, ve- still available. Um, if somebody says to me, you know, the Pash H is, you know, it's old, it's yeah. this, it's that, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This thing with a fine with a fine needle will still go down to, I can take it down to a pencil line. Wow. Easily, easily. But if I put a wide, if I put the wide needle on, you can use it to do a model railroad layout the size of this table. And you can still, with a larger jar, you can just paint away, right? The flexibility in this thing is tremendous. Um, one of the top airplane builders in the world lives here in Toronto. There's a lot of them. Uh, his work in the Smithsonian. You know, when you're kind of that high in the food chain and building, you know, that's that's pretty. You're in rarefied air when when you're doing stuff for the Smithsonian in in Washington. Um, this is still the the choice of his airbrush. Actually, he came about a month ago and he rated all my parts. Because I always keep, when people bring stuff in or I buy collections, if there's a Pash H, I always take it. Um, because I can, we can use it for parts, right? And he, he was, he had a field day because I, I gave him a whole whack of parts for it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Still uses it. So it's a <coughs> great airbrush. So when I say single action, it's only got one action, which is pushing down for air. That's it. This is a single action, externally mixed airbrush, and it's siphon feed. So... The air and the paint are mixed at the very tip, and then this is siphoned. So a cup is held here, or a jar, and the air, the paint is drawn up into the cone, into the needle, that's the cone, and then it is externally mixed at the end. Your adjustment point is using the cone, and it has only one action for your finger, which is single, for pushing down air. Yeah. So once you establish what your line is or what your your line that you will be painting, you know it's it's a great airbrush. Um, does it have any down points? I'm going to say absolutely not. Um, it's it's a tremendous airbrush. So again, single action, external mixed, siphon fed. Okay, so that that's the Pash H. Then we move to the Badger 200. Again, incredible airbrush. I think I bought this one 30 years ago for probably 30 bucks. Wow. Um, again, this, now this has a small cup. This is a gravity fed airbrush. So again, single action, one function for pushing down for air. Internally mixed. So this is called a gravity fed airbrush. So that cup is held the paint is held in that cup and it's fed through gravity into the body of the airbrush and it's mixed inside internally mixed right the adjustment point for your line is at the end so you establish your Mm -hmm. your pattern at the end right again how good is this airbrush honestly it's a tremendous airbrush and again if you had to replace this airbrush now it's $80. So again, when people come in and they'll say, well, I need the best airbrush you have. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, slow down here. Because if, depending on what you're gonna use it for. So do I still use this airbrush? Absolutely. Because man, you can, again, when you mix paint properly, this this airbrush will go down to a technical pencil. It's, it's that good. Mm-hmm. Um, and very simple. 
a very simple airbrush to use, right? So again, single action, mm -hmm. gravity fed, right. internally mixed, okay? Then you get into the other side of airbrushing, which is double action, meaning two actions, okay? Um, this is uh, Tamiya. This one is made by Tamiya, the same company as, that builds models. Truth be known, their high-grade airbrushes are all done by Iwata. Um, but again, they're done to Tamiya specifications. Beautiful airbrush for the money. Double action. Okay, so that, that's what we're going to focus on. The double action means that I'm pushing down for air and I'm pulling back for paint. So all the action is based on, on two, mo two motions, pushing down for air and drawing back for paint. My spray pattern will be how, how the proximity of the airbrush versus what I'm painting is. It's internally mixed. And again, this is gravity fed. So the paint goes into the cup. It goes down into the body. It's internally mixed and it comes out the end. And your adjustment is basically done by your finger and the proximity. Okay. How do you get consistency? <laughs> So, a very super good question. Okay. Um, a lot of them you can adjust the travel of the needle, so that kind of locks in your that locks into your 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 painting. Okay. Um, there's a couple of things. Control is one. The thing about airbrushing, the the whole um, the whole fundamental of what you're gonna find find is based on. Five things. Keeping it clean. Keeping it clean. If it's not clean, that's where you start running into problems. So when you're talking about consistency of, of when you're trying to, like your consistency of painting, um, it's kind of like a chain of events. Because if your airbrush is clean, that's your first strike, good strike, right? Proper paint mixing is your second thing. So we're going to talk about paint mixing. And, and then air delivery. So if you have a good consistent air delivery, that is also gonna kind of affect that. So if you have all those things together, like you have, you know, your airbrush is clean and serviceable right there and then, and then you're mixing your paint to proper ratios, and then you have good air delivery, then everything else kind of comes into play, right? Because air delivery, again, is, is, is air delivery more important than cleaning? Not really, but they all kind of, they all work in sync. Because if you have a, if you have a blockage in your airbrush that because of whatever, and, and, and don't get me wrong, like, it happens to me still all the time. Like I'll take an airbrush, and this is my day-to-day -day airbrush, I'll take that airbrush, and, and I'll be like, why isn't this working? It could be the smallest, smallest bit of paint in the flow nozzle, kind of back in the body, who knows? So we all, like, I, none of us are immune to that. And, and trust me, there's more times I paint. I had to do something the other day, a gentleman wanted to come and kind of privately, you know, do something with an airbrush. So I thought, I'll take the opportunity to paint something for me, right? <laughs> because I had yeah. something I had to do. And I, I took some Gen 3, some AK Gen 3, and I thought, oh, okay, I'm Mr. I'm Mr. Cool here, and I've done this all the time, and I had the parts, and you know, I had my Gen 3, and I had the, the, uh, the thinner for it, and I'm thinking, oh, okay, I can do this, you know, customers here, and had a great little session with the customer. So then I, I stirred the Gen 3, put it in here, put some Gen 3 thinner in. Nine out of 10 times, it'll paint beautifully. Well, this was the tenth time it did, <laughs> and it's it's. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. I like that. Thanks for coming. It spat. It it spat, farted, and hacked all at the same time. No. And I'm like, oh, that's good. It flew back. It blew back. So, and then I don't know what happened. I try. You know, once I got the thing painted, and I was kind of embarrassed. Like, you know, to somebody watching, they think, oh wow, that looks really good. The paint looked because it was kind of painting like a civilian tractor, 35th scale, but I'm using a like a bright orange, it's like a case tractor from the 40s. Yeah, yeah right. It's bright orange. To the average person, it went on beautifully, but I'm looking at it going, oh, 
what a disaster. <laughs> and then I went to clean the airbrush after, and it was just the paint. It was like watching a toddler eat. Like the paint was all over the place. And yeah. So we all have those days. And that's what I want to emphasize. Like we all have those experiences where you're going to, you're going to paint and it may not be your best yeah. day. Yeah. But um, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about how to problem solve a bit and um, everything else. So. Yeah.